Hello and welcome to Infinity. When converting to black and white, there are a number of conventional methods which we're going to go through quickly, but then we're going to show you something that is quite different and less usual, but very powerful. So here we go. Let's go to this layer, hit Control J a number of times to, so we can try it in different ways. Starting off, we're going to go to HSL and just desaturate here. And notice what happens here, because at the beginning of these, all these pictures got red, green and blue and cyan, magenta and yellow, which are the saturated versions. As we turn this down, it goes completely to grey. And that affects how it affects the rest of the picture, which are kind of different amounts. But it can be different, difficult to uh, separate out saturated colours. So the next one is also saturation, but with a different control vibrance here. Now saturation when you turn it down is different. Here see the colours here are actually being treated differently so you get a different perceptual effect. So green for example which is the eye sensitive to is given a lot more uh, power there to make it more white. And if we compare the this with the original HSL quite different. Now then next one let's go to uh, the, I'm going to go to the channel mixer and the, I'm not going to use the controls but very simply to change the colour space here to grey. So the colour model is grey and here we get the effects. Again we get some perceptual changes down here but in a different amount and they are again different to the uh, vibrant one and the difference to the other one. So let's, let's give these names. This one's HSL. This is Vibrance and this one was grey. We'll do one more common one which is black and white. And this is you go again to the adjustments and go up to black and white up here. And here again, look at what's happened if we take these off here so you actually see this one, this layer here. And this has made all the colours here go white. So the saturated colours start off white here. You can control with these quite a lot with the colours, but the starting position is here, which highlights how you really do need to kind of play with these to get the best result. Turn that one off. And the next one, now we get into the different stuff. And we're going to go to filters and apply image. This is a very different um, apply image to the one you get in Photoshop. Although I suspect there are relationships here. So what you do is you click on the current layer of source, click on equations, and now you can put in values here. And DR is destination red, SR is source red, but by and large you can put an equation here in which SR means red, SG is green, SB is blue. And so in order to get the average of these three, I'm going to put a, a bracket at the beginning, SR, plus SG plus plus SB, close brackets, all divided by 3. And what this does is it averages them out because each one of SR, SG and SB can be from 0 to 1, so no value to fully saturated. And add all those up, those are going to get to the maximum of 3. So divide by 3 and you get down to the average of each. Now I'm going to just control C to copy this. And I'm going to paste it in to each of the others. And when red, green and blue are all the same value, you get grey. And you see down here we get different effects here from the red, green and blue and the cyan, magenta and yellow. But within those, those are the same. But we've got a different effect here. So I'm going to click on apply. It does take a while, so I'm going to do a little skip forwards. So I'm just going to call that weighted. Oops, no, just on the average. There we go because the next one I'm going to do is weighted average. So, but you can compare that with the other ones from before and they're never, not quite the same in each of these. And you can see that because of the way it does these. But let's go to the next one. Now we're going to do what's called weighted average. So again, filters, apply image and click on current layer and equations as before. But now we're going to apply a different percentage of each one. 
So I'm going to take, so green, for example, is the most common uh, uh, color in terms of, it's most powerful in terms of what the eye perceives. I'm going to give a lot more weighting to green. So I'm going to start off with 0 0.6 times SG, which means 60% of green. And add that into 0 0.3 times SR, which is 30% of red, plus 0 0.1, so just 10% of the blue we're using, times SB. And there we go. I can select that, control C, and then copy it to the others as well. So they've all got the same amount in, so they're all grey. Now look here at the different perceptual values. Each of these is a different value. Yeah, so blue is black because that's the darkest one. Remember, we only took 10%. And green is the lightest. So if we apply this, call this weighted average. And so this is a very powerful way of giving you a lot more control over how something is turned to black and white because you can use a different percentage of each of the green, red and blue. And you can make decisions on that by looking at the, th the channels palette down here and looking through these and they'll show you how those are going to contribute more or less. So there we go, a more powerful, bit more formula type thing, but it's not that difficult a way of converting to black and white. Anyway, there we go. Thank you very much for watching.